for the next. Chop Brewster Energy becomes another dining room story. Particles of praise shine in the sunlight. Anything you grab hold of on the bank breaks with the river's pressure. When you do things from your soul, the river itself moves through you. Fresh. Nest and a deep joy are signs of the current. 54. Sexual urgency, what a woman's laughter can do, and the nature of true virility. Someone offhand to the Caliph of Egypt, the king of Mosul has a concubine like no other, more beautiful than I can describe. She looks like this. He draws her likeness on paper. The Caliph drops his cup. Immediately he sends his captain to Mosul with an army of thousands. The siege goes on for a week. With many casualties, the walls and the towers unsteady, as soft as wax. The king of Mosul sends an envoy. Why this killing? If you want the city, I will leave and you can have it. If you want more wealth, that's even easier. The captain takes out the piece of paper with the girl's picture on it. This. The strong king of Mosul is quick to reply. Lead her out. The idol belongs with the idolater. When the captain sees her, he falls in love like the caliph. Don't laugh at this. This loving is also part of infinite love, without which the world does not evolve. Objects move from inorganic to vegetation to cells endowed with spirit through the urgency of every love that wants to come to perfection. This captain thinks the soil looks fertile. So he sows his seed. Sleeping, he sees the girl in a dream. He makes love to her image, and his semen spurts out. After a while he begins to wake. Slowly he senses the girl is not there. I have given my seat into nothing. I shall put this tricky woman to a test. 55. A leader who is not captain of his body is not one to be honored, with his semen spilled so in the sand. Now he loses all control. He doesn't care about the caliph, or about BYMG. I am in love, he says. Do not act in such heat. Take counsel with a master. But the captain couldn't. His infatuation is a blackwater wave carrying him away. Something that doesn't exist makes a phantom appear in the darkness of a well, and the phantom itself becomes strong enough to throw actual lions into the hole. More advice. It is dangerous to let other men have intimate connections with the women in your care. Cotton and fire sparks, those are, together, difficult, almost impossible, to turn. The captain does not return straight to the caliph, but instead camps in a secluded meadow. Blazing, he can't tell ground from sky. His reason is lost in a drumming sound, worthless radish and son of a radish. The caliph himself a gnat, nothing. But just as this cultivator tears off the woman's pants and lies down between her legs, his penis moving straight to the mark, there's a great tumult and a rising cry of soldiers outside the tent. He leaps up with his bare bottom shining and runs out, scimitar in hand. A black lion from a nearby swamp has got him in among the horses. Chaos. The lion jumping 20 feet in the air, tents billowing like an ocean. The captain quickly approaches the lion. Splits his head with one blow, and now he's running back to the woman's tent. S. When he stretches out her beauty again, his penis goes even more erect. The engagement, the coming together, is as with the lion. 
His penis stays erect all through it, and it does not scatter semen feebly. The beautiful one is amazed at his virility. Immediately, with great energy she joins with his energy, and their two spirits go out from them as one. Whenever two are linked this way, there comes another from the unseen world. It may be through birth, if nothing prevents conception, but a third has come, when two unite in love, or in hate. The intense qualities born of such joining appear in the spiritual world. You will recognize them when you go there. Your associations bear progeny. Be careful, therefore, wait, and be conscious, before you go to meet anyone. Remember there are children to consider. Children you must live with and tend to, born of your emotions with another, entities with a form, and speech, and a place to live. They are crying to you even now. You have forgotten us. Come back. Be aware of this. A man and a woman together always have a spiritual result. The captain was not so aware. He fell, and stuck like a gnat in a pot of buttermilk, totally absorbed in his love affair. Then, just as suddenly, he's uninterested. He tells the woman, don't say a word of this to the caliph. He takes her there, and the caliph is smitten. She's a hundred times more beautiful than he's imagined. A certain man asks an eloquent teacher, what is true and what false? This is false. A bat hides from the sun, not from the idea of the sun. S5. It's the idea that puts fear in the bat and leads it deeper into the cave. You have an idea of an enemy that attaches you to certain companions. Moses. The inner light of revelation, lit up the top of Sinai, but the mountain could not hold that light. Don't perceive yourself that way. Having the idea is not living the reality, of anything. There's no courage in the idea of battle. The bathhouse wall is covered with pictures and much talk of heroism. Try to make an idea move from here to eye. Then your woolly ears become as subtle as fibers of light. Your whole body becomes a mirror, all eye and spiritual breathing. Let your ear lead you to your lover. So the Caleb is mightily in love with this girl. His kingdom vanishes like lightning. If your loving is numb, know this. When what you own can vanish, it's only a dream, a vanity, breath through a mustache. It would have killed you. There are those that say, nothing lasts. They are wrong. Every moment they say, if there were some other reality, I would have seen it. I would know about it. Because a child doesn't understand a chain of reasoning, should adults give up being rational? If reasonable people don't feel the presence of love within the universe, that doesn't mean it's not there. Joseph's brothers did not see Joseph's beauty, but Jacob never lost sight of it. Moses at first saw only a wooden staff, but to his other seeing it was a viper and a cause of panic. 58. Eyesight is in conflict with inner knowing. Moses' hand is a hand and a source of life. These matters are as real as the infinite is real, but they seem religious fantasies to some, to those who believe only in the reality of the sexual organs and the digestive tract. Don't mention the friend to those. To others, sex and hunger are fading images, and the friend is more constantly, solidly here. Let the former go to their church, and we'll go to ours. Don't talk long to skeptics or to those who claim to be atheists. 
So the Caliph has the idea of entering the beautiful woman, and he comes to her to do his wanting. Memory raises his penis, straining it in thought toward the pushing down and the lifting up which make that member grow large with delight. But as he actually lies down with the woman, there comes to him a decree from God to stop these voluptuous doings. A very tiny sound, like a mouse might make. The penis droops, and desire slips away. He thinks that whispering sound is a snake rising off the straw mat. The girl sees his drooping and sails into fits of laughing at the marvelous thing. She remembers the captain killing the lion with his penis standing straight up. Long and loud her laughter. Anything she thinks of only increases it, like the laughter of those who eat hashish. Everything is funny, every emotion has a source and a key that opens it. The caliph is furious, he draws his sword. What's so amusing, tell me everything you're thinking. 59. Don't hold anything back, at this moment I'm clairvoyant. If you lie, I'll behead you. If you tell the truth, I'll give you your freedom. He stacks seven Qurans on top of each other and swears to do as he says. When she finally gets hold of herself, the girl tells all, in great detail. Of the camp in the meadow, the killing of the lion, the captain's return to the tent with his penis still hard as the horn of a rhino. And the contrast with the caliph's own member sinking down because of one mouse whisper. Hidden things always come to light. Do not so bad see. Be sure, they'll come up. Rain and the sun's heat make them rise into the air. Spring comes after the fall of the leaves, which is proof enough of the fact of resurrection. Secrets come out in spring, out from earth lips into leaf. Worries become wine headaches, but where did the wine come from? Think. A branch of blossoms does not look like sea. A man does not resemble semen. Jesus came from Gabriel's breath, but he is not in that form. The grape doesn't look like the vine. Loving actions are the seed of something completely different, a living place. No origin is like where it leads to. We can't know where our pain is from. We don't know all that we've done. Perhaps it's best that we don't. Nevertheless we suffer for it. The Caliph comes back to his clarity. In the pride of my power I took this woman from another. So of course, someone came to knock on my door. Whoever commits adultery is a pimp for his own wife. 6 so, If you cause injury to someone, you draw that same injury toward yourself. My treachery made my friend a traitor to me. This repetition must stop somewhere. Here, in an act of mercy. I'll send you back to the captain, saying another of my wives is jealous, and since the captain was brave enough to bring you back from Mosul, he shall have you in marriage. This is the virility of a prophet. The caliph was sexually impotent, but his manliness was most powerful. The kernel of true manhood is the ability to abandon sensual indulgences. The intensity of the captain's libido is less than a husk compared to the caliph's nobility in ending the cycle of sowing lust and reaping secrecy and vengefulness. Tattooing in Q-A-Z-W-I-N In Coswin, they have a custom of tattooing themselves for good luck, with a blue wing, on the back of the hand, the shoulder, wherever. A certain man there goes to his barber and asks to be given a powerful, heroic, blue lion on his shoulder blade. And do it with flair. 
I've got Leo ascending. I want plenty of food. But as soon as the needle starts pricking, he howls, what are you doing? The lion, which limb did you start with? I began with the tail. Well, leave out the tail. That lion grump is in a bad place for me. It cuts off my wind. The barber continues, and immediately the man yells out, Ooh! Which part now? Doc, let's do a lion with no ears this time. Me here. The barber shakes his head, and once more the needle, and once more the wailing, where are you now? I like a lion without a belly. The belly. The master lion maker. Stands for a long time with his fingers in his teeth. Finally, he throws the needle clown. No one has ever been asked to do such a thing. To create a lion without a tail or a head or a stomach. God himself did not do it. Brother, stand the pain. Escape the poison of your impulses. The sky will bow to your beauty, if you do. Learn to light the candle. Rise with the sun. Turn away from the cave of your sleeping. That way a thorn expands to a rose. A particular rose with the universal. What is it to praise? Make yourself particles. What is it to know something of God? Burn inside that presence. Burn up. Copper melts in the healing elixir. So melt yourself in the mixture that sustains existence. You tighten your two hands together, determined not to give up saying, I, and, we. This tightening blocks you. 62. The center of the fire. No more wine for me. I'm past the lighting in the thick red and the clear white. I'm thirsty for my own blood as it moves into a field of action. Draw the penis blade you have and strike, until the head circles about the body. Make a mountain of skulls like that. Split me apart. Don't stop at the mouth. Don't listen to anything I say. I must enter the center of the fire. Fire is my child but I must be consumed and become fire. Why is there crackling and smoke? Because the firewood and the flames are still talking. You are too dense. Go away. You are too wavering. I have solid form. In the blackness those two friends keep arguing. Like a wanderer with no face. Like the most powerful bird in existence sitting on its perch, refusing to move. What can I say to someone so curled up with wanting, so constricted in his love? Break your pitcher against the rock. We don't need any longer to haul pieces of the ocean around. We must drown, away from heroism, and descriptions of heroism. Like a pure spirit lying down, pulling its body over it, like a bride her husband for a cover to keep her warm. Someone who goes with half a loaf of bread to a small place that fits like a nest around him. Someone who wants no more, who's not himself longed for by anyone else. He is a letter to everyone. You open it. It says, lie. The mystery does not get clearer by repeating the question, nor is it bought with going to amazing places. Until you've kept your eyes and your wanting still for 50 years, you don't begin to cross over from confusion. Muhammad and the Huge Eater Kusum demands that we begin Book 5. Zia Hak, The Radiance of Truth Kusumudan, master to the pure masters, if my human throat were not so narrow, I would praise you as you should be praised, in some language other than this word language, but a domestic fowl is not a falcon. We must mix the varnish we have and brush it on. 
I'm not talking to materialists. When I mention Musam, I speak only to those who know spiritual secrets. Praise is simply drawing back the curtains to let his qualities in. The Sun, 64, of course, remains apart from what I say. What the sayer of praise is really praising is himself, by saying implicitly, my eyes are clear. Likewise, someone who criticizes is criticizing himself, saying implicitly, I can't see very well with my eyes so inflamed. Don't ever feel sorry for someone who wants to be the sun, that other sun, the one that makes rotten things fresh. And don't ever envy someone who wants to be this world. Usum is the sun I mean. He can't be understood with the mind, or said, but he'll stumble and stagger trying to. Just because you can't drink all that falls doesn't mean you give up taking sips of rainwater. If the nut of the mystery can't be held, at least let me touch the shell. Usum, refresh my words, your words. My words are only a husk to your knowing, an earth atmosphere to your enormous spaces. What I say is meant only to point to that, to you, so that whoever ever hears these words will not grieve that they never had a chance to look. Your presence draws me out from vanity and imagination and opinion. Ah is the sap that will heal our eyes. And clean, constant listening. Stay out in the open like a day calm lifting its arms. Don't bore mouse holes. 65. In the ground, arguing inside some doctrinal labyrinth. That intellectual warp and wolf keeps you wrapped in blindness. And four other characteristics keep you from loving. The Quran calls them four birds. Say Bismillah, in the name of God, and chop the heads off those mischief birds. The rooster of lust, the peacock of wanting to be famous, the crow of ownership, and the duck of urgency, kill them and revive them in another form, changed and harmless. There is a duck inside you. Her bill is never still, searching through dry and wet alike like the robber in an empty house cramming objects in his sack, pearls, chickpeas, anything. Always thinking, there's no time. I won't get another chance. A true person is more calm and deliberate. He or she doesn't worry about interruptions. But that duck is so afraid of missing out that it's lost all generosity, and frighteningly expanded its capacity to take in food. A large group of unbelievers once came to see Muhammad, knowing he would feed them. Muhammad told his friends, divide these guests among you and tend to them. Since you are all filled with me, it will be as though I am the host. Each friend of Muhammad chose a guest, but there was one huge person left behind. He sat in the entrance of the mosque like thick dregs in a cup. So Muhammad invited the man to his own household, where the enormous son of a goose turk ate everything. 66. The milk of seven goats and enough food for 18 people. The others in the house were furious. When the man went to bed, the maid slammed the door behind him and chained it shut, out of meanness and resentment. Around midnight, the man felt several strong urges at once. With the door, he works it, puts a blade through the crack. Nothing. The urgency increases. The room contracts. He falls back into a confused sleep and dreams of a desolate place, since he himself is such a desolate place. So, dreaming he's by himself, he squeezes out a huge amount, and another huge amount. 
but he soon becomes conscious enough to know that the covers he gathers around him are full of shit. He shakes with spasms of the shame that usually keeps men from doing such things. He thinks, my sleep is worse than my being awake. The waking is just full of food. My sleep is all this. Now he's crying, bitterly embarrassed, waiting for dawn and the noise of the door opening, hoping that somehow he can get out without anyone seeing him as he is. All short in it, the door opens, he's saved, Muhammad comes at dawn. He opens the door and becomes invisible so the man won't feel ashamed, so he can escape and wash himself and not have to face the door opener. Someone completely absorbed in Allah like Muhammad can do this. Muhammad had seen all that went on. In the night, but he held back from letting the man out, until all happened as it needed to happen. Many actions which seem cool are from a deep friendship. Many demolitions are actually renovations. Later, a meddlesome servant brought Muhammad the bedclothes. Look what your guest has done. Muhammad smiled, himself a mercy given to all beings, bring me a bucket of water. Everyone jumps up, no, let us do this, we live to serve you, and this is the kind of hand work we can do. Yours is the inner hard work. I know that, but this is an extraordinary occasion. A voice inside him is saying, there is great wisdom in washing these bedclothes. Wash them. Meanwhile, the man who soiled the covers and fled is returning to Muhammad's house. He has left behind an amulet that he always carried. He enters and sees the hands of God washing his incredibly dirty linen. He forgets the amulet, a great love suddenly enters him. He tears his shirt open. He strikes his head against the wall and the door. Blood pours from his nose. People come from other parts of the house. He's shrinking, stay away. He hits his head, I have no understanding. He prostrates himself before Muhammad. You are the whole, I am a despicable tiny, meaningless piece. I can't look at you. He's quiet and quivering with remorse. 68. Muhammad bends over and holds him and caresses him and opens his inner knowing. The cloud weeps, and then the garden sprouts. The baby cries, and the mother's milk flows. The nurse of creation has said, let them cry a lot. This rain weeping and sun burning twine together to make us grow. Keep your intelligence white hot and your grief glistening, so your life will stay fresh. Cry easily like a little child. Let body needs dwindle and soul decisions increase. Diminish what you give your physical self. Your spiritual eye will begin to open. When the body empties and stays empty, God fills it with musk and mother of pearl. That way a man gives his dung and gets purity. Listen to the prophets, not to some adolescent boy. The foundation and the walls of the spiritual life are made of self-denials and disciplines. Stay with friends who support you in need. Talk with them about sacred texts, and how you're doing, and how they're doing, and keep your practices together. Fasting. There's hidden sweetness in the stomach's emptiness. We are loose, no more, no less. If the sound box is stuck full of anything, no music. If the brain and the belly are burning clean with fasting, every moment a new song comes out of the fire. The fog clears, and new energy makes you run up the steps in front of you. Be emptier and cry like reed instruments cry. Emptier, right?
night secrets of the reef pen. When you're full of food and drink, an ugly metal statue sits where your spirit should. When you fast, 